the Noxie and Cax Show with Liz Knox and Carol Lemard. <laughs> Let's get it. Go. All right. Welcome, hockey fans. The Noxie and Cax Show brought to you by the PWHPA and SDPN. I'm your host, Liz Knox, alongside Carol Lemard out in Montreal. And before we get into introducing our very special guest, Cax, how have the last 24 hours been? This is crazy. I can't believe we're even recording this. I know I'm, uh, I'm nervous. I'm uh, excited. Um, I didn't know I could get that many followers in one night. Uh, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> we're hoping to, um, you know, give you guys what you uh, deserve. And then uh, hopefully you'll have as much fun as we uh, are having uh, hosting these magnificent guests. Exactly. So, uh, pretty pumped for this one. <laughs> and honestly, a huge thank you to SDPN, everyone that's working behind the scenes. We'll get to that later. But let's get to the best part of our show, introducing our amazing guests. The fans want to know you. So she attended four world championships. She represented Canada at the U18 level. She's a Paddy Caz winner. She's an NCAA championship <laughs> champion. She's a Clarkson Cup champion. The list goes on and on. And now the best heading of all, we can finally say she's an Olympian. <laughs> Jane Atre. Woo! Even got the <laughs> yes, dog Jamie, going. Even Winston. The dog was excited. <laughs> The timing oh, was man. perfect. The dogs <laughs> Thanks, know. Yeah, Riley, thanks <laughs> Thank so much for coming on. Like, we know that I think you fly out tomorrow. Is that correct? Yeah, we head out tomorrow. And thanks for having me. And I'm so excited for you guys to do this. I think you two, two of the best people to do this. And uh, I can't wait to hang out with you guys for the next little bit. She, she's already pumping our guys. <laughs> yeah, ready. Come on. Okay, let's get to the meat and potatoes. What, like, how does it feel to officially be able to call yourself an Olympian? Uh, you, to be totally honest, I'm not even sure if it's really sunk in yet. I think, um, you know, I, you know, I, you guys know, and some people know that it's been a really long road for me and personally, and I just learned that I am, uh, the oldest first time Olympian to play for Canada hey. since the 98 Olympics, right. Cause 98 was the first time, but, uh, I'm not sure if I should feel good about that or feel yeah. old. Like all yeah, you should. You Don't. wear that girl. <laughs> Do not let age define you. Let's all of a sudden my <laughs> All of a sudden my hips started hurting. No, um, <laughs> definitely a really cool, uh, moment. Like, you know, obviously with COVID and everything going on, it was, you know, we did it via zoom and definitely different than I'm sure some of the girls have had in the past, but I, honestly, I could have gotten that news anyway. It wouldn't, it would have been the same and obviously instant tears for me and an emotional day. But, uh, I think that when it sinks in is when we're driving into the village and I see the rings for the first time and obviously the swag. I mean, who can't be not excited for the swag? So, yeah. <laughs> My God, that is cool. I'm, um, we're really proud of you one and two, uh, I think you deserve it more than anyone else. And, and we're going to go through everything that you've done so far in your career. And I can't wait for our listeners to get to know you. Uh, we know you a bit more, so we're really, really, really <laughs> pumped, really proud yeah. that you made it. You crushed Thank it, you. Rowdy. So we were talking about this in like a pre-recorded episode, a little bit about centralization. Like yeah. walk us maybe through a day in your life over the last, what, six months? What, how many, how many months have you been centralized in Calgary? Yeah. So, well, with the world championship, I mean, obviously uh, the world championship was in August. So our centralization kind of started a little bit earlier. So uh, we started back in August, uh, sorry, actually almost in July, it was like July 26th. Um, so you can do the math on how many months that was, but um, yeah, so we started off with the world championship at the beginning, which was a little bit different that like usually centralization starts in uh, usually September, I think, or And you just go right into training and right into that kind of stuff. So um, it was kind of neat, actually, I think, um, you know, having a world championship before, because you kind of got to come together as a team a little quicker, I think, because you kind of had to. Um, And you also kind of figured out what your, where your roles were and how you fit into the group. And um, for us, it really happened really quickly. And I think that really helped us through centralization. Um, So after the world championship, so that was basically like a regular tournament um, day to day. So you do your practices, then games and that kind of stuff. But um, after that, we went into centralization, uh, and basically, you know, we were, we're based out of Calgary. Um, and for the most part, we will go to the rink in the morning. We'll practice as a team and then we'll do a, a lift in the afternoon and, uh, usually have lunch at the rink. We're really spoiled in terms of, you know, being able to spend a lot of time together. And, um, and then actually this year we did a lot of traveling. So we played a lot of, um, you know, teams around Alberta area, but also we went to Finland uh, for a couple of trips, we also played a lot of teams, uh, a lot of, a lot of games against the U S. Um, so, 
Um, you know, we were based out of Calgary and we did a lot of time there, but we also traveled a ton this year, which I think was also good because, you know, heading into Beijing, it's going to be a big, uh, you know, a big time change and a lot of travel. And we're going to, now we, we're, we're pros this year. So, um, you know, it's definitely a grind. I think, uh, I would say mentally probably more, I think, you know, everyone, you know, we are part of the team, but also everyone knows it's, you're trying to make the Olympic team during the year. And, um, that can be a mental grind every day, trying to show up and, you know, put your best foot forward. And that looks different for different players, right? You know, you look at girls that are maybe trying to make the team for the first time or girls that are on the, have been on the team for years, their stresses are different from different areas. And, um, you know, I, I for sure went through a mental, you know, there's a couple of weeks there where you're, you're kind of, you know, grinding it out in the dark days of November. And, um, you know, it's not an easy time, but also it's pretty easy to wake up every day and go to work when you, when you get to do that. So. On, on, uh, on that note, Jamie, like you, you know, you, you've known these girls forever, uh, you've competed or played with and, and try to make out, make these teams like on that mental side of things. And then knowing that technically you're competing with one of your best friend or someone along line that you've known forever. Like I mentioned, like that piece, like specifically, like how, how is it? Like, I don't think we can put words into it or, or even define like you it. want them to do well, but like, party was also like, well, if you kind yeah, of suck, I hope that's she good for me fails without failing too hard. And you know, like, how does that, how that, like, yeah. How does that go? Like, yeah, it's, you know. it's not easy. Like, uh, like you said, we're all human, right? We, you know, I think the biggest thing that I learned in my career, like I've been on the senior team eight years now and um, you can't really, you can't control what other people do, right? You got to control what you, you're doing. And Um, I honestly, I do believe if you're generally happy for your teammates, it will help you, you know, be more positive with your game. I think for me, as soon as I figured out that um, I could just focus on what I can control and what my role is, yeah. it didn't matter what anyone else was doing. That's when I became a little more successful within this program. Um, it, it took me a couple of years to figure that out, right? Like I think Um, my first couple of years on the team, I, you know, I was at a couple world championships, but I didn't play much. I was, you know, 13th forward or I was in the stands, which, which was fine. I was very happy to be there, but you also kind of lose some confidence there. because you're mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I don't feel like I'm as good as them or as you know, whatever, but in reality, I was more worried at that time. I was more worried at what other people were doing as opposed to like my own game. Um, and I think that's what really made me successful. The last quad, this last four years was, I just focused on where I fit my role and my niche and what I could do anything, you know, what, what, what did I have to do to make this team? And, um, you know, it takes time and, um, you know, we're all human. I think it's a, that's the human side of the game, but I think honestly, the more genuine you are with your teammates and it will make the whole group better too. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, so it's, all such, those it's such an incredibly yeah. like mature response. And honestly, <laughs> I think it's hard for, anybody who you know anybody who's played any sort of elite level like you know what that feels like at the end of the day like you want to succeed but you're right it's incredible what having like a positive mindset can do not only for the people around you but for yourself so let's talk a little bit I'm gonna throw some shade here a little bit at the <laughs> hockey Canada coaches okay like I watched the rivalry series I watched the world championships I didn't see my girl ratty on the ice enough in my opinion okay when you were out there things were happening. It may not have always ended up shot on net, but you know, you're in the mix, you're getting under player's skin. Um, you're not afraid to like take a check. So how talk about that, that mindset that, you know, you've developed over the last four years and how, you know, that impacted your game. If you were playing two minutes or 20 minutes a game. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're all human, right? We all want to play all the time, every shift, power play, PK, you know, you know, and as a goal, like for yourself, Noxie, as a goal, you want to play every game. That's just how we are wired. And to be honest, we wouldn't be where we are if we weren't wired that way. Um, for me, I think I figured out that, um, you know, that that was kind of my role. And, and to be honest, I was just going to take advantage every time I was on the ice. And to be honest, You know, we're, we're, this is the national team in Canada. This is our national sport. Everyone is good. Everyone can play at every single role in every single situation, right? And you think about, you know, all of us growing up uh, college or even pro or, you know, even growing up, we all played, you know, we were all were that player, right? We all were yeah. the go-to player, really. And, um, you know, what I learned is, like I said before, is you just got to figure out where you fit and uh, what you can control and how, you know, how you approach that and, The big thing for me, especially during the world championship was, 
Um, I can control my attitude and my effort. And that's something that I really brought to the rink. I tried to bring to the rink every day. And honestly, like in that gold medal game, I would have been completely fine sitting there, um, not playing a shift if it meant we want, like, it didn't matter. It didn't matter to me. Um, because if we, if we were just rolling and everything was going well, I would have been completely fine just hanging out there and watching the girls compete. And, 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 oh, you know what I, you know, I think it also takes some time to learn that doesn't matter how much you play or what role you're in, you are very much a part of the team either way. And that that's some, you know, we're human. I think sometimes it feels like you're not, but you, you, and especially in this group, um, everyone is a part of this team and a part of the process. And that's, uh, take some time to, to soak that in, but honestly, it's, it's the best part. Well, I think you were the most efficient player out there, to be honest. <laughs> uh, if I had to uh, bring in some advanced stats uh, to that and the time on ice that you had versus how much efficiency you brought to their team now, but like the role and what you were talking about, like the mental toughness you've had to just focus on the right things versus like focusing on maybe what you used to uh, a few years back, um, allowed you to probably perform, uh, the way you performed in the shifts you had too. So like, I, I just like from what you thought you brought positivity roles, like I'm going to do what I can with what I can control. Like it showcased on the ice. And then we saw it, uh, on TV or in the stands, uh, every time you jumped on the ice, you had an impact. Uh, and I think that like you well-deserved and whatever work you did leading up to that, um, impressive and keep it up because people need to learn from you from there. That's for sure. Uh-huh. And like Cax is saying, we're coming from a, a point where like, we've both known you for many, many yeah. years. Right. So some people are seeing you for the first time now at these Olympic games and definitely a player to watch, but talk us through, okay, maybe a little bit of a long question here, but talk <laughs> us through some of the transitions between like when you were at Clarkson university, right? You guys were a national championship team, tons of studs, Lots of them are going to be in this uh, Canadian and U.S. rosters um, or, you know, like uh, you'll see them at the national level. And then how that transition from there to coming to the CW, eventually playing PA for a couple of years, now to the Olympics. Because if you know Ratty, Ratty is a goal scorer. Like she has the puck, it's in the net, right? And as you said, the last four years, finding a slightly different role. Talk us through maybe some of your college days, what that was like first. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny you say that because I actually just got off a call with Clarkson and we had all six Olympians that, um, you know, are going to this Olympics. And we talked about kind of the culture and um, how it, how Clarkson molded us into the players we are today. And, um, you know, I, when, my career at Clarkson, we had eight, I think, eight girls come into the program. And you guys know, like, um, that's a lot of a lot of players coming in at once. Yeah. That's a lot of and at the time Clarkson was still a young program, had a lot of expectations on them. And we were supposed to, we had a very high, highly touted class. Our year was, there was a ton of talent and we had so much pressure on us. And we honestly, we set the record for the most losses. Like it was just <laughs> kind of, a, <laughs> so that the way we, it goes. I love that. <laughs> I honestly, like it was crazy. Like I think back and at the end of that season, um, the eight of us sat in a room and we said, you know, not one of us thought about transferring or giving up. We just said, okay, how do we fix this? How do we, you know, make sure that this doesn't happen again? And we honestly made a kind of a pact to each other that every freshman class that came in, we wanted to make sure they felt comfortable and in the culture and knew exactly what Clarkson hockey was to be successful. So, um, you know, we had a lot of adversity, you know, that first couple of years I was at school. And by the time we were, I was the senior, we won the national championship and we set a record for the most wins. And now obviously that record started been- from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> like, look out. Yeah. And that record obviously has been shattered now, obviously, because Clarkson is such a powerhouse. But, um, you know, I think that adversity really taught me a lot and how, you know, to create a winning, winning culture. And, um, you know, and then moving on into the CWHL, my transition was, kind of similar like I went to Brampton and we had a terrible first season we maybe won like four or five games correct me if I'm wrong Noxie but um, <laughs> look at that oh, sorry I was just having a sip from yeah. my mug gosh <laughs> I should have brought St. Lawrence like- while she was talking about Clarkson because St. Lawrence was on top of it on a first oh, year okay. I was shots <laughs> fired shots <laughs> fired um, I'm just I, I took the advantage there I saw the cup but you can go back yes Brampton yeah, so, let's let's go back so, to Brampton now <laughs> and and then again we had a lot of girls come in uh pretty good players and it just didn't work out. And then, and then we, again, like we just started, we had a great, great group of people. We started 
started building and building. And then again, the fourth year of my um, CW career, we win the Clarkson Cup. And it's just like, so what you you're saying is you're just on a four year, <laughs> like you're a four year builder. Like it's you can four year planner. That's, that's what it is. That's it. Like, so you just marry. when you're goal setting, yeah. none of this one, five, 10 <laughs> ratty is strictly four years or nothing. <laughs> yeah. So every four years is uh, good for me. And then, um, and then obviously this last quad, I think this last quad was probably the most interesting because, you know, the CWHL folding was hard for everybody. You, you two included, I think we had, you know, we had been a part of that league for myself. It was six years and, you know, you put some, you know, you, you have so many memories and so much work and, um, that was really hard. And then obviously the pandemic throws a whole different wrench into it in terms of training and mental. And, um, I honestly think like, I learned a lot of adversity through Clarkson and also through those first four CW years, but this last four taught me how to just stay, you know, tunnel vision kind of like my mentality was, you know, we never knew when the next event was happening, whether it was Mm -hmm. hockey Canada or PWHPA or anything. It was just like, okay, today I'm going to train. I'm going to mentally try to get, I'm going to get better as an athlete and as a person, and I'm going to control what I can control in every single day. And, um, I'm sure, I'm sure that happened for a lot of different people in different, um, you know, professions, but for me, that was another, you know, adversity and another way to build, you know, myself as a human, and as an athlete. And I think, um, now it's the same, it was the same deal through centralization. I just had to take it one day at a time and focus on what I could control. And, um, again, with the Olympics coming up and there's so many factors in terms of, you know, COVID and travel and just one, one foot in front of the other and do what you can. So, um, there's been a lot of adversity in terms of, um, you know, on the ice, but also off the ice, I think in the last, you know, 12 years, actually, that really helped uh, me get here. So that's awesome. And okay. So speaking of adversity now, who would you say, cause you can't control who you play against, right? You just <laughs> said it. There's only so much you can control. Who is the player you dislike playing against the most? And why is it Carol and Mart? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she puts so, it right in, eh? <laughs> Kicks it right in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a way to get you in there, Noxy. Too. Next yeah. Time. Well, there's gonna be more of that. Yeah, well, that's yeah. where that comes from. <laughs> For those who don't know how Cax plays, Cax is like the most like she's so good, but she's also like a little. Can I say shithead? I don't know if that's a yeah, word. Yep. You can little, say that. <laughs> she just like gets we're chatting. Your, yeah, she just gets in your grill and like she does all the right things and just like gives you little shots here and there and it's just like the like it's. And, and then makes the tape too. to tape breakout pass or scores yeah. or like does something even more annoying. Like, yeah. And she just like chirps you. And, um, I remember like we used to have so many battles in college cause she went to St. Lawrence and for those who don't know, it's nine miles down the road from Clarkson. So it's it, probably the, one of the biggest rivalries in, in college hockey. Um, and we, I just remember just the battles, like, and then like high emotions, like, cause everything in college is just like, matters so much like you know you're young you're just like oh this game is the biggest thing ever you know and we used (laughs) to play on a tuesday we gotta win this is yeah yeah and (laughs) we're busting i remember like well yeah the slew coach wellsy he was just yelling and just it was just crazy some of the rivalries we had um but you know it's uh but like at the end of it you know we always shook hands and moved on we're friends so it's like yeah, those are the best, the best games. I was going to say, and you can talk about the real person you hate to play <laughs> against after this. Um, but uh, every time we play against you and I, since, uh, I mean, C-Dub, obviously maturity level in college was uh, not as uh, yeah. as great as it, as it is now. Uh, there's a few shove, there's a few punches and everything. Uh, but now in, the, in what used to be the C-Dub and the P-Dub now, uh, we go at it and then it's almost if there's like a pause and then we look at each other. It's like, nah, we're good. And then you'd like, <laughs> you go, or it's like, Raddy, you don't want to do that. You're going to get a penalty. That's what I do. And then it's yeah. like a chirp type of situation. And at the end of the game, shake hands. Good job. I freaking hate yeah. playing against you. <laughs> <laughs> like those always happen. And I, um, this was not part of like this episode was not about me. So let's talk about <laughs> you and who you hate to play against. <laughs> Cause I do cheer people, but I'm, I'm not that great. You guys were too nice. So yeah. give, give us something from the national and then we could switch topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, um, it's hard. Like right now, I mean, I mean, in the past, it was definitely the lambs, the lamaroos. They were yeah. probably the toughest, like, and I think a lot of girls will probably say that. I think they're just, they're 
they were so good and they were so tough and they honestly didn't give a crap. Yeah. They were they didn't just, give a shit. and, <laughs> and the, you know, and like, that was like, it was so frustrating. He was like, I just want to get to this girl and make her, you know, but you could never get to them. They were just like, yeah. So let's switch gears a little bit here. Raddy, tell us a little bit about who you are outside the rink, yes. like things that come to mind. What do you do in your summertime? Where are you? What are you doing to enjoy, you know, life outside of hockey? It's a grind, right? Like, especially playing at the national level, you got to train every day. You're mentally in it. Like, I think people like the misconception of elite athletes is like, oh, you guys just get to work out every day. But like when we go to the gym or to the rink, we mentally have to check in every single day. And like every set we do, everything is with intent. And yes, I'm very lucky that I get to work out every day and train and like, but it's, it can be, it can be exhausting, right? It's, it's a lot. So um, I very much are the type of person that loves my downtime. Like even in events like this, even pre-Olympic game, like camps, I like to come back to my room. I like to just relax, watch TV, or I've become kind of a gamer over the pandemic. So I like to yeah, play Call I of have. Duty. And um, so stuff like that. And then in the summers, you know, I've, I've had, I have a cottage uh, about 45 minutes uh, away from Belleville in Ontario. And that's more home to me than anywhere. I think that's where I feel most at home. And you know, I grew up with, you know, my family is all there, you know, family that's not actually blood, but their family. And, um, you know, if I, if I had my way, I'd be on the boat all day, every day and just enjoying it. And, you know, that's my, that's my home. And, um, if I had the choice, if I could train up there and I would be there all summer if I could, but, um, every weekend that I get a chance to go up, it just makes me the happiest human ever. And, um, I love to cook. So being up there and cooking all the good food and, and just join. Raddy you know. is a great host. Damn. Like I need she to, knows we need to how do a barbecue to on a weekend. Okay. Not to jump topics. We're, we're running close on time here. We've got about five minutes left, but speaking about the cottage, cause listen, there's tons of water sports up there. Yeah. All the friends, all the guys on the lake, you know, there's wakeboards There we're throwing footballs. We're playing spike ball. Like we're hitting golf balls off the dock. We got a <laughs> sauce King. We got it all. But the best toy that we pull out at Raddy's cottage is literally like a half sheet of plywood cut into a circle from 1986. Like this thing has been around for generations and they just like you guys wigboard on it or like, I don't know what you would what? call it. it yeah. Okay, so Raddy, tell us like, where does this thing come from it's and how do we get this? <laughs> it's, it's literally just, it's called the disc. It's called the disc and it's okay. literally a piece of plywood cut in a circle. That's all it is. Piece of plywood. No, so, nothing. And it, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a piece of plywood. And what you do is you go, so we use our little 9.9 .9 aluminum boat, which is very slow. Um, yes. and you go very slow with a ski rope and you, you basically, you can do anything you want on it. So you can go on your belly and drag, you can go on your knees and you can stand up, you can go, you can spin around because it's a circle, but you're going very slow. So you can't get hurt. Um, we've also gone to the lengths of like bringing a chair. So what we'll do is we'll get, <laughs> We'll get a launch, like a regular chair, and you just, we, we duct tape pool noodles to it so it floats, right? So well, you can't lose either, the chair. You yeah, can't true, lose, true. You can't lose the chair. So either I'll start with it like around my arm with the ski rope and I'll get up and then sit on the chair or stand up on the chair. Or uh, my dad used to like throw it over the side of the boat and I'd catch it on the way and then sit on it. <laughs> and this is like the most it's financially like... like inclusive water sport ever you need a 9.9 yeah. .9 motor and a half sheet of plywood <laughs> and and on and top of like, it it's like don't just stand on it or lay on it let's compete who can yeah, actually grab boring. a chair on the way and then who <laughs> can do this and who can like i love that <laughs> yeah just, and like people people on the other docks like when we go by are like what are these people doing <laughs> <laughs> and now, now that I'm a little bit older and an adult, you know, I'll have a cool beer back there sometimes and enjoy it while I'm, you know, cruising by, oh, but yeah. here's another uh, challenge. we have, I, I want to try like just starting on the chair and like on and just going off, but I don't know if that'll ever work. But some of the things we also one time did a GT snow racer behind the dock, behind the boat, <laughs> but it was, it was so, it was, the spray was so bad. My friend and I, my buddy, Ted and I had to wear like um goggles. goggles and like yeah. we would just be hanging off for dear life and trying to steer but you know some of the stuff we used to do as kids is like crazy but I you know it. there's a bid now to like put in new sports into the olympics so i think maybe summertime <laughs> you can see a disc lawn chair or pulling I can't competition wait for you to I can't wait for you to explain what it like, what needs, like what you need in terms of like material and then see if it actually gets approved just, or not. Just a piece of plywood. literally. That's, that's it. That's it. And a rope. Okay. It's, we're going to wrap up here really quick, but 
want to talk about what are you most excited for for the Olympics? Yes. Um, if let's say COVID was not a thing and you could go to any any event, what are you looking at? And then we'll wrap it up with uh, you know your final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think for me, I mean, the opening ceremonies is probably going to be the biggest thing. You know, we actually really don't know you know, with COVID and everything and our tournament kind of starts before not really knowing if we're able to go or if we're going to go for a little bit. Uh, I really hope we can, obviously as a first time Olympian, I think, you know, that's what everyone thinks about, but um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the COVID protocols are. You know, if I had my way, I would go watch as many sports as I could, but I think the cool one that everyone talks about is like the short, short track speed skating. I, apparently it's just wild. So I, that would be something I would love to watch. And then um, you know, I think almost any, I, it's, I think as an athlete, you can really, um, appreciate different sports and how much work yeah. goes into it. And like, you know, it's pretty crazy to watch like a figure skater do all these the stuff on the ice and things that you don't know how to do. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think all of it, I honestly just think the whole experience is going to be crazy. And like I said, once in a lifetime and just got to take it all in. Well, <clears throat> when you get there, enjoy uh the utmost like everything all events all the things that you can actually do hopefully COVID allows you to do that uh Raddy it was a pleasure to have you on our first show here at the Noxy and CAC show and um honestly we will be watching we'll be uh probably doing some episode during the Olympics as well too so uh we'll keep a good tab on you but again thank you so much for joining us today um it was a blast to have you and I discovered even more about you. The disc <laughs> is I need to come to your cottage at some point, inviting myself right now <laughs> to try this thing on that behind that boat or whatever that is. Yeah. You yeah. Do. You're, you're welcome. Anytime. Anyone is welcome <laughs> up to the scoot. We call it the scoot because it's on the scoot. Uh, scoot, amount of, scoot amount of lake and whatever. It's funny. We always like, Oh, the scoot, the scoot. Everyone's like, what is the scoot? Like, what are you guys talking <laughs> And it's just, it's just the lake. And it's just like, as Knox, you can attest to it's, it's home. And, We've had like 20 of the girls up there at once and it's the best. It's honestly the best weekend of the summer and Cax, you're more than welcome. I have no Brampton person to mark him, but I'm going to hey, and act like honorary. I am. Honorary. Honorary. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, thank you so much, Roddy. First episode in the books. It was so much fun. I'm so pumped to see how the SDPN fans love you. Um, to our women's hockey fans, get to know you a little bit more. Looking forward to doing it again in the future. From the Noxie and Cax show and SDPN and the PWHPA, thank you guys so much for listening and tune in to our next episode. The Noxie and Cax show on SDPN, produced in partnership with the PWHPA. Follow Noxie and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMR. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out sdpn.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. Free stars!